hold on tight. The champ is here. Mikey is raising the roof. He is loving it. Let's be real for a second. Let's be real. Let's I'm be excited real. to be real today. Mikey, you are now explain yourself. I, I don't hate Russell Wilson. Todd hates T.Y. Hilton. I know why he likes Nick Foles. Do you know why? Because he scored 55 points against them in the championship game last year. <laughs> Running backs and Andy Reid systems, just fantasy yeah. gold mine. Sign me up there, man. Yeah, and he's passing for a thousand too, because his offensive weapons are <laughs> shit. Maybe. <laughs> so oh my it. god, I, I can't even believe this, Eric. <laughs> Todd comes out with some outlandish shit. Oh ship. come on. But that one wins the night. <laughs> you you deserve the torture of ha of watching those games if you get him. There's a problem with what all those names. None of those guys are good. Aaron. Exactly. That's my point. <laughs> that is 100% my point. Hey, 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 hey. All I'm saying, all I'm saying, hey. hey I'm, I'm, I'm a very unique individual. You're, you know, that's the, I'm and, sure and, all the owners think so. Oh, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Just when I think that they're out, they pull me back in. <laughs> Hello, MHA owners. We have a new champion. So glad you're listening into our championship review that took place this past weekend. You're, of course, listening to the MHA podcast. We hope everyone is having a safe and fun holiday season. I'm Eric Lansing, along with Todd Diamond and Mike Renault. Guys, how was your Christmas this past weekend or Hanukkah or whatever holiday you guys celebrate? It was great. You know, very, very, very relaxing, you know, for, for whatever it's worth for, for 2020. So it, it works. No complaints. No complaints. How was yours, Mikey? This is very, very well. I spent most of it with you, so I hope you didn't mind. I was around <laughs> there pretty much every day. <laughs> nah, you're okay. It was all right. I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm not losing in fantasy, I'm a pretty chipper dude. Uh, well, and uh, of course, we do have someone uh, who's excited to be on this podcast. He's our brand new MHA champion who's awesome enough to join us on the podcast. G, congratulations on your first Mile High Affiliates Championship. <laughs> How you feeling, my man? Oh, yeah, already, man. You know, I'm feeling like a champ, you know? Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm feeling real good, man. I'm feeling real good. I know you uh, You were calling me. Uh, like, you were texting me through the game, and then you called me after the game, and now you've had a night, a night to kind of sleep on it. H how's that feel? I mean, does it feel different? Does it still – do you still feel high? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, – I, I feel pretty – uh. Pretty excited. I am. I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, you know, and uh, like I said, you know, it was uh, going into it, man. I was I was nervous as a hooker in church. I promise you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, listen to that loud, that last podcast. And, you know, Aaron, Aaron talking all that ish and talking about <laughs> Fuck G and all that. So, OK. All right. <laughs> Well, you'll right. get your chance to definitely uh, <laughs> give your thoughts on Aaron as well. Uh, we're glad you're here, and we'll get into that matchup kind of from start to finish. So you ready to talk about, kind of look back on this past week. It'll be interesting to hear your thoughts. Uh, before we get into those games, I want to ask you about uh, moving your players off your starting lineup so it's blank. Now, Aaron asked me about it and thought that maybe you were playing mind games with them. I said, I, I recall you did it a couple times. I remember you did it against me. What's your kind of thought process and clearing out the starting lineup and then putting them in later in the week as opposed to some of us who just kind of switch guys here and there. Oh, so you guys caught on to that shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we always do. We're always looking at our next opponent and seeing like who, who, who we have to face up against. And uh, so, yeah, Aaron definitely noticed. <laughs> well, what it is, and I did hear him say that uh, in the last, po last podcast, and I laughed. Um, it's just... You know, when you it, – it's beneficial on both sides, to be honest with you. So when I clear out my roster, what I'm trying to do is trying to get a fresh look at things. Um, so I try to say, okay, let's clear that out. It's kind of like a fresh start. But then again, you know, a lot of people kind of look at who's across from them, who's playing who at wide receiver, who's playing who at running back, things like that, and they actually go with it. So – any type of advantage that gives, I try to take that away. And then it makes a person, you know, study longer. A lot of people will, uh, you know, get get kind of uh, tired of looking at things, getting tired of reading things, and sometimes they'll quit. Sometimes they'll go, oh, you know, I'll look at it later. And it's just like boxing, which I did when I was a kid. 
it's um you know it's that slight moment when you're not studying or when you're not doing something is when you drop the ball and then you know we take full advantage of it sure i, I kind of thought that same thing when you when you when i was at when uh, me and aaron were kind of conversing about it I, I you know some of us just get complacent like oh i'm gonna leave this guy i know i'm gonna start this guy but if you take him out it kind of adds that extra step. Like you kind of have to think about it, even if it's for a second. It's like, would I really put him in here over this guy as opposed to just leaving the guy in the lineup? You may not move a guy all year from that wide receiver one position, but if you take him out, it kind of makes you think a little bit of a, a couple extra steps, I guess. Right, and you may and you may put him right back in the same position he was the following week, you know. Right. But it's just a matter that someone doesn't know that. It's an uh, element of surprise. Yeah. Um, and then, like, you know, Aaron didn't get a chance to see who I was playing with, who I was working with. So it made him look at my roster harder, compare his roster and, you know, more study. And like I said, you know, when people slip and they, you know, they always say, you know, like I always I love the rock when he says, you know, he says, I love you guys, but you motherfuckers will not outwork me. And that's the whole mentality is that whole thing is no one's, you know. You don't want anyone to outwork you, whether it be, you know, football like this or, you know, yeah. boxing or whatever you're doing. Sure, I get that. Make make them sweat. Yeah, so maybe those mind games came into effect. Uh, kind of going uh, into this week, well, you know, were there any uh, tough final decisions? What, what was really plaguing you? What was keeping you up late at night in terms of uh, who you wanted to start during the week? Was there anybody or did you pretty much know who you were going with? And no, this was actually one of the more – more one of the more uh i don't know tougher weeks to decide um and the one was tough was quarterback i did not know who to start was it going to be herbert against denver in la who throws for 300 yards but you know he's uh you know was he going to be beating him up so bad uh was it kyler who's going to run but now you're running against robert Taylor's defense who plays you twice a year um you know, I, I, I was that close to playing Jalen Hurts, to be honest with you. No kidding. Yes, I almost played Jalen Hurts. And it was because of the fact, I mean, but look what he did. He showed out. He showed up and he showed out. So, you know. Um, but through that whole thing, what's odd about it is I was, I was pretty pissed off that Kyler didn't throw for a touchdown. He didn't rush a touchdown at all. Yeah, yeah. But he still had more points than any of my running than any of my quarterbacks. Yeah, he had 31 completions and 75 rush yards, so that definitely adds up. Right. Right. Uh, any other any other guys that you? I mean, what about your running back situation? Did you pretty, did you feel comfortable going into the weekend with the guys you picked out? I did after uh, after Jacobs. I'm sorry, not Jacobs. After uh, Robinson was uh, put out put out. I said, you know, I already know who I'm going to run, um, you know, and I, I know Mikey was kind of down on the whole J.K. Dobbins thing. And with J.K. Dobbins, though, Mikey, you got to understand, yeah, it's a, it's a two, three headed monster. But um, your boy, uh, I can't think of his name. Um, Gus Edwards, he is good. He's he's fast. He's good. And everything. But there's they, they, I, they have some type of. Like they trust Dobbins more, you know, and Ingram was a healthy scratch two weeks in a row and Dobbins scores touchdowns and Edwards does too, but that's a running team. <laughs> you really can't stop Baltimore from running if they get on their game. So it was easy to do that and not put Jacobs in that, that now that's, and I noticed in our rosters, me and Aaron's, we didn't le really leave too many points on the, on the uh, bench. But the only one that I that I was going to do is I was definitely going to play Aguilar instead of Jacobs. I picked him up this week and I was going to do it and I decided not to do it. So um, <laughs> if you just would have scored that damn touchdown like you're supposed to. Go we'll ahead. talk about that. Uh, that first game right out of the gate, Tampa Bay versus Detroit and Tampa Bay absolutely slaughtered the Lions, Thomas Brady. Found everyone in the offense, including Mike Evans, who came up big for you. Scored a very easy touchdown from Blaine Gabbert in the second, third quarter. Excuse me, in the third quarter, Thomas Brady didn't even play in the second half. That's how big ahead they were. So you sent me a text like, "Oh boy, here we go!" And uh, he just balled out. That was amazing. 
because he hasn't been a yards guy for all the season, except for the past two weeks. He's gotten over 100. So, um, you know, when he when he scored the first, I was like, OK, but then when he scored that second one, I said, yeah, I had to text you, bro. I said, Here we go. <laughs> You know what it is. It's mine, baby. <laughs> yeah, you, you figure with Thomas Brady or Tom. I don't know why I keep calling him Thomas, but Tom Brady uh, out for the game, out for the second half. You figure maybe the backups were going to come in, but there was that Mike Evans still out there and caught that easy touchdown. So that must and that was great. You also got 14 points from Tampa Bay's defense. You right. have a four sacks, a pick, a fumble recovery against the Lions defense that gets up the seven most points to the defense position. And so right out of the gate, uh, your team's up, doing well. You're up 45 to nothing heading into that afternoon game, a big game that I was only on Amazon Prime. So if, it, if anybody didn't have Amazon Prime, they can get to watch the game. But uh, Cardinals and 49ers, we talked with Aaron on the, on the past podcast, talking about which running backs he was going to start. And he went with Jeff Wilson, and he blew up for 26 points, 22 carries, 183 yards, and a TD. On the Cardinals side of the offense, NWA had Kyler Murray. And uh, Lion Rip had DeAndre Hopkins. Both put up decent numbers. Nothing otherworldly as we've seen in the past. But Murray didn't have a touchdown, as G mentioned. Did have those 31 completions, 75 rush yards. And Hopkins had eight receptions, but no TDs, 10 points. And so, uh, you know, you were you even texted me, I think, uh, I think it was, I don't know if it was later that evening, but you're like, oh, I don't know. I think I may have uh, started the wrong quarterback. Because uh, I know we were talking about, well, Herbert's got the Broncos. Broncos have given up some big point totals this year. But Murray, in the end, ended up having the most points out of all your quarterbacks. So, again, it kind of comes back to making the right moves. And uh, that ended up, uh, well, working out six points ahead of, or I guess five points ahead of Hertz since you were thinking about putting him in. All right, so now you're, uh, you're Las Vegas Raiders taking on Miami. Uh, you ran with Jason Sanders as, as your kicker, and he was uh, incredible. You also went with Josh Jacobs, as we mentioned, in your flex spot. The Raiders do give up the seventh most, point, seventh most points to kickers and 15 points, including that game winner to take down your Raiders. The end of the game was quite controversial. It was pretty crazy. In fact, you had the Aguilar long touchdown, uh, which you mentioned you thought about starting him. And if, if for those who didn't watch the game, I'll give you a quick recap. Uh, Gas, Miles Gaskin scored on a 59, 59-yard touchdown pass after the Aguilar touchdown pass. Uh, to put the Dolphins up by one with 2.55 left. The Raiders get down to the six with about a minute, a minute 50 left to go. Jacobs receives the handoff, could have easily scored for G and for his squad, but instead he falls down on purpose at the one so his team could run the clock down as far as they could. Head coach John Gruden wanted to run the clock uh, as, as I think it was down to 19 seconds. Uh, now mm-hmm. the controversial call is instead of going up by two with a field goal, you could have scored a touchdown, maybe go for that two-point conversion, and then you're up by seven. So, you you know, you can't lose by a field goal. Uh, they'd have to score a touchdown, which is definitely a lot harder than a field goal. With 19 seconds left, a lot has to go right to get that field goal. But with the way the NFL works, a lot of pass interference calls happen. Uh, and, of course, what we saw was Ryan Fitzpatrick throw just an amazing pass down the sideline with his head being ripped off. And in the, his head being ripped off, 15 extra yards, and then two plays later – Jason Sanders uh, kicks that uh, 44-yard field goal. So, gee, uh, what's kind of going through your mind to see as you see in your boy Jacobs kind of take it take it down at the one, and then your team falling at the end? That's got to be just tough on both ends. Man, I, I I was looking at the TV and I just shook my head and I said, <laughs> I said, shit, man. And you just talking about it? I gotta go take a shit real quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, next th- up, next. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. And like, and like I had told you, you know, it, it's, I don't know why Gruden, I don't know why in the world Gruden thought it was okay to trust the defense again. Uh, they haven't done, they haven't done anything all year. So, you know, why trust them now? And just score the touchdown, man. And I'm sitting up here going, yep, that's just my look. And honestly, through my mind, I said, you know what? Watch this come back to bite me in my butt. I did. Mm. I said, this touchdown, not being scored by Jacobs. Watch me end up losing by like four. So. Just like the Raiders, right? They just, <laughs> you know, they lost. <laughs> they lost because they didn't score that touchdown with Jacobs, and you could have lost if, because of that touchdown not scored by Jacobs. Yeah, and at that time, I would have reconsidered being a fan. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, that's not what happened at the end. You could remain a Raider fan for now. 
so Jacobs ends up finishing with six points instead of possibly 12. Uh, G does get four on that uh, game-winning field goal from Sanders. So that was a pretty good pickup there. So we get into Sunday's game and Sunday morning with quite the touchdown rush by NWA. You know, I know when I go into a Sunday, I want to feel that first touchdown go through. And then maybe you get another one and another one. And that's exactly what happened with G. Jonathan Taylor gets two rushing TDs from the one. J.K. Dobbins gets one. Travis Kelsey with an incredible 17-point 17 de- 17 day, which included his 11th touchdown of the season. Considering he had five of all last season, that's a big advantage for anybody. And, uh, you know, if you, want, if you want to win a championship next year, draft Travis Kelsey. He's been on the past three championship teams, both with Aaron and now with G. Um, so, you know, you, you must have been feeling good. It's just one touchdown right after another. And uh, you're just piling on that lead as you head into the afternoon games. Oh, man. That, I mean, you know, and I get the little, get, you know, I don't, I guess, get, I'm sure we all get the little Yahoo pop-ups. Oh, of course. Man, yeah. that shit kept popping up purple. Notification. Notification. I was like, talk to me. <laughs> talk to me. Touchdown, Taylor. Touchdown, Dobbins. I was, I was ecstatic, man. I said, I'm going to blow Aaron out, you know? And <laughs> that was, I was just, I was just on cloud nine, man. I was. Yeah, yeah, you had to. Mm-hmm. Kind of go back to Kelsey. He reached 1,400, 1,400 yards for the season. And that's an all-time record for tight ends. So not only did he get Travis Kelsey, who's by far and away the best tight end, he had one of the best all-time seasons as well. Uh, some other notes about the morning games that Lion Rip uh, talked to me about and I saw too, but things that could have helped him out. I don't know if they would actually help them win, but uh, for those who watch uh, the red zone, uh, Cleveland actually scored a defensive touchdown but got pulled off the board. I can't remember why. I'm sure it was a penalty of some sort. Uh, Mark Andrews, I think, dropped two touchdowns in that game. I only saw one of them, but Aaron swears there was two. Uh, so that's that's like three touchdowns that could have gone his way and made a huge difference. Uh, but that's that's the what ifs, right? You just uh, some days it's it's your day, and some days it's not. And the fantasy gods were looking over G uh, during those morning games. Okay, yeah. so uh, line rip. Uh, you know, the big question mark for him all week was uh, Baker Mayfield or Russell Wilson. Uh, he, he was obviously. Uh, Tough decision for him, Mayfield, playing the Jets, who gave up the fifth most points to quarterbacks all season. And, of course, we've seen what Russell Wilson has done, at least in his better days. He's kind of been struggling, and I don't know if that's an offense struggling or play calling has been different. Uh, but he has not been putting up uh, more than 50 points in quite a while. He ended up sticking with uh, Russell Wilson. Uh, and so NWA up 160-55 to 55 heading into the second half of games. Wilson and DK Metcalf uh, giving all of us fits all season long. But – uh, as we mentioned, the offense has been struggling, and uh, just I think it was a total of 49 points combined between the two. So a little less than Lion Rip was hoping for, uh, but you know, 49 points is what it is. So we head into that Sunday night game. The Packers and Tennessee G's team was up 160 to 109, so the blowout still intact. Lion Rip had Devontae Adams and. Uh, for G, uh, he also had Tyler Bass, the kicker for Monday night, with NWA having Stefan Diggs also on Monday. I told G he should feel good minus a miracle. And boy, Aaron almost got it. G, mm. tell me how tough mm. was it? I don't know if you were watching that game, but boy, Adams almost brought him all the way back, didn't he? No, oh, man, force feeding that clown, man. Just <laughs> here, like nobody else plays the damn game. Shit, you got other wide receivers. <laughs> Shit, coach put the water boy in, <laughs> you know? Oh, so, yeah. yeah, that just pissed me off because I'm sitting here going, I mean, well, I, and I think I texted you the first thing, and I looked at the score, and it went one, two, ten. And I said, whoa, 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 what the fuck is that? <laughs> um, and I looked, and I was like, he scored a touchdown already. <laughs> and, you know, so I'm getting myself ready for work because I go into work Sunday nights and everything. And, man, I looked at the score. I, I, I looked at it, and, man, he had 28 points. And, oh, it was 27 or 20. I said, you cannot be serious. <laughs> and I just, oh my goodness, you know, uh, if anybody would have asked me a question right then, I'll let him have it. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, um, he's been, and I, I think I said this to you too. Uh, uh, Rogers just force feeds the ball to yes. Dante Adams, and he got that early one. And you know, I know he doesn't have the best options. I mean, he's thrown the ball to Tanya in this year, and. Uh, Marquez Scantling uh, or Valdez Scantling has got, had some days where he had two touchdowns, but it's always been Devontae Adams, and he ended up with 36 points. He almost had a fourth touchdown. I don't know if you guys remember 
Uh, but there was one, it was like Aaron Rodgers' last drive, and he caught him down the left side, and he was actually, he, he broke his tackle and was running. It was like, oh, here comes number four. Luckily, a safety came out of nowhere to push him out of bounds, but uh, that could have been a little detrimental, at least uh, going in. And Aaron was sending us, at least Mikey and uh, Todd, some text saying, I'm going to need a big 50-point day. And then he says, okay, 40 points to go, 33 points to go, 22 points to go after every touchdown. And then it was down to 16. And uh, Seabass, that's what he likes to call the kicker, uh, Tyler Bass, Seabass, and then it was Diggs. And so uh, going into that game, how are you feeling? You feel confident up 16 with Diggs and, and his kicker, or did was there any nerves at all? Um, okay, first of all, there's only one Seabass, Aaron, so get it right, baby. <laughs> okay. Second of all, um, I was nervous. Uh, yeah, he's talking about the Sebastian Janikowski. That's who you're talking about, Seabass, right. right? Yeah, that's for those right, who don't baby. know. Most of us know the Dumb and Dumber sea bass from the, the movie, but I think I caught it when you, because you're a big Raiders fan. But go ahead, <laughs> my man. <laughs> so um, yeah, you're right. I mean, um, I was nervous because uh, AFC East, if you know, they, the kickers have to be very accurate, be pretty good because of the weather they play in. And he's right, Bass is a great kicker, and uh, you know, with him and. You know, Sanders, and which is my kicker, Sanders and everything. I was just like, man, he could get those points. You know, uh, New England and Buffalo is known for those. So I said he could get those points. And, uh, you know, going into the second half, if you remember, uh, Diggs only had one catch for like four yards. Right, right. <laughs> So there again, you know, the hooker and church thing came into place. <laughs> it, it was interesting because I know Diggs got hurt in the last game, the previous game. He came out early. It was a foot problem. And so, mm -hmm. you know, Aaron and I were talking like he could like tweak it or maybe they I mean, they needed the game. So you don't want to say they were going to save him, but maybe they just wouldn't push him as hard or limit it, limit his uh snaps and so forth and so I, I thought well maybe you tweak something and then it's just sea bass and you know without digs that would force him to kick field goals and that would add up pretty quickly because he also got a field goal right away and he had an extra point so i think he cut it to with like 11 at one point mm -hmm. uh so pretty close but then uh digs arguably the best wide receiver in fantasy this year could be up there with uh, Devontae adams as well but three touchdowns, nine receptions, 145 yards, and then the blowout. Then the blowout went from there. So it yes. must have been great for talk. Give us a little bit about you know why why you drafted Diggs. You were telling me a story that you wanted to draft him the year before, but man, none of us and we've talked about this before. Like none of us thought Diggs would put out the numbers he did, considering he was going to Buffalo. It's cold. They run the ball more. But Allen is taking a step kind of towards MVP status. And they really opened up the offense over there in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, you're right, E-Man. Um, if you look at, I don't know, I mean, we're right, you guys are right there. If you look at what um, what my man Allen did uh, when he was in Wyoming, you know, he was known to throw the ball. Yeah. You know, uh, he, brought that, he brought that different element to Wyoming because, again, you know, Mountain West is – they're running, and, you know, the only one that throws really is Fresno State and a couple of other ones. But um, he just – he came into his second year, you know, came in, and he came in tough. And I just – I just – you know, I had this thing. Diggs has always been good, even in Minnesota. Um, and I just felt that if he had a new place, you know, then he could – he could uh, – he could excel. I didn't think, if you remember the third week in the podcast, you know, we were all talking about, you know, a trade him. Even Mikey. And Mikey, do you remember you said, all that shit's going to stop when it gets cold in Buffalo? <laughs> and you know what I said? Yeah. You I don't that? recall. I don't recall. Oh, stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet you don't. Play the tape. Play the tape. <laughs> right. You know, everything's recorded or taped nowadays, so mm -hmm. I got it, too. Baby. It's on YouTube, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just, I mean, I, and just the way he's been balling out and, you know, with uh, with him playing and and uh, doing what he was doing, I did not think for one second that they were going to rest him. But then I remember at the end of the last game that 
when they said he tweaked his ankle, he was on the sideline sitting there laughing. And so I think it was just a precaution the last game. So I said, nah, he's going to play and he's going to do all right. And then here comes the second half. So when that, when that second half came and he, he threw the first touch, I didn't even see it. I think, I, I don't know what we did. I think I went into the living room because the damn dogs were barking. I was like, shut up. So, <laughs> Um, but then I came back and they showed it, and I was like, "Oh my God, he scored! Nice!" And when they threw the second one to him, and he got, you know, a uh, sandwich, I said, "As soon as they threw it and he caught it, I said, he's gonna go into the end zone." I said, "They they sandwiched him, he's gonna go," and he did. I was like, "Wow, man!" And just it was just amazing to watch, you know. That and at that time, I'm sitting here watching, and. Um, you know, and seeing that, and I'm, and you can just feel like, you know, it's nostalgic. You're like, yes, yes. And um, funny story is, uh, my my real quick, my son. This is his first year ever playing. So, uh, you know, shout out to Jay. Love you, son. How old Good is uh, How old is he? Jay is 16. Okay, right on. Yeah, and he won his championship. First time playing, so he won his championship. But he had digs last, and he was down by 20 points. Oh, I, he, he, yeah, he called me, Dad, you know, oh, I'm nervous. He's not going to I said, hey, Diggs, Diggs, is, he's about that. You know, don't worry about it. He's, he's, <laughs> he's great. He's ready. So wow. uh, he just exploded. He was happy. So I was very happy for him, actually, more than me, because this is his first year. So I want him to actually be good, be better than me, and... You know, that's awesome. I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking like it's some like I'm trying to pass a torch or some shit. But uh, um. <laughs> well, that's cool. I think it's great though. It's 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 you know, dad and son. It's something they can do together and have fun with. You know, and uh, for you guys to come even closer, if that's possible, it's it's really neat to have similar uh, likes and and hobbies. I think it's great. I think it's a cool thing. Yeah, and we talked about it. You know, the half the season, he he finally told me, hey. That I need help. I said, I didn't even know you were playing fantasy football this year. Oh, no. oh yeah, I didn't even know. <laughs> he told me in the middle of the year. So his first thing was when Chubb got hurt, he said, I'm going to get rid of Chubb. And I said, don't do that. So I had to help him up a little bit, <laughs> you know, so. That's cool, um, though. Yeah. Yeah. And I told him this was going to be a father-son takeover this year. And we did it, baby. Wow. Father and son championship yeah. Uh, duo for sure. That's amazing. And so Diggs balled out, uh, winning the title, winning his first title. Uh, NWA's 194 points, matched Lion Rip for most points scored this season in a matchup. Lion Rip put up 194 in week five against Belt Sanders. Uh, the 194 points also surpassed Lion Rip for most points scored in the season. So not only did G win the championship, he also uh, had the most points by the end of the year as well. 1,858 to 1,854. So beat them by four points. The top two scoring nice. teams in the league were in the championship, and the top scoring team won the championship. Seems fitting in a weird kind of COVID season. Yeah. yeah pretty cool. <laughs> the final total, the final tally was 194 to 153, which brings us to some MHA trivia. All right, Brain. You don't like me, and I don't like you. But let's just do this, and I can get back to killing you with beer. It's a deal. So the final tally in terms of total points is 347. Uh, so the 347 points, was that the most between opponents this season? And you guys can just say yes or no, or if you remember a time where your team scored a bunch of points, you can just throw it out. Throw it out. So 347 points, the most in a matchup this season? I'll say no. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's it's definitely no. Um, I believe it's definitely no. And I can't believe, I can't recall, but I think someone had 170 or 180 or like 160, something like that. Pretty close. The, the most was 351 as opposed to 347. It was between Eaton W's and Lion Rip. Eaton W's with the win, 186 to 165. Wilson had 73 points, and uh, Dak Prescott still with uh, Kevin at this point, 69. Mike Davis had 20, Kamara had 36, Keenan Allen 23, 16 for Hopkins. Uh, so uh, the biggest one uh, 
was between Eaton W's and Lyra, not the championship. But how about this for a trivia question? So not the highest point total this season, but was it the highest point total ever in a championship game? I'll say yes. No. I thought there was I thought there was one. Maybe the I was thinking maybe the one between me and Aaron, but I don't know if that was because that, that that one was pretty high scoring. I'm gonna stand uh, back and just listen. <laughs> <laughs> why why do you not think why do you think it's the highest mikey we had some years we had two quarterback leads it's true but i just felt like saying yes <laughs> g you want to throw a guess out there no nah, i'm staying pat i'm just gonna stand pat and listen <laughs> all right okay i got gotcha. you so uh todd you said you thought your matchup with line rip was pretty high yeah sure it, it was high but it was not the most uh, 2018 okay. is one you're talking about. It's 193 to 149. And so mm-hmm. I went back all the way uh, to 2004. So in 2003 and 2002, they do not have the point totals for the players. However, I did my best to kind of tally up the scores. Now our scoring was a little different back in those days, uh, where I believe um, in terms of rushing and passing, or excuse me, rushing and receiving yards, it was one point for every 20, uh, as opposed to rushing yards now, where we give one point for every 10. Uh, and so that's a little different, but uh, Mikey is correct. The NWA championship over line rip, 347 points in championship is the highest point total ever in the history of MHA. Mm. Don't question me when it comes to trivia. <laughs> That's right. Mike <laughs> knows his stuff. And right, line rip over Butterfingers was the second most, uh, just by five points. Hmm. So pretty cool. Two, what was that, 2018 total? Uh, 342 points. Uh, you, what was it? You said 193 to 140 something? 149. Ah, Todd, you got your ass whipped. No, 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 Nick Foles with my ass. That's why. That was the I'm not talking about that anymore. And I just kind of okay. noticed this now, but G, now with his 194 points, has the highest point total ever by a champion in a championship game. Yo, please believe me. Yes, sir. <laughs> let the. See, let the, see just the think, G. Continue. If Josh Jacobs had scored that touchdown, it, it would have looked so much nicer. You would have had 200. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or if I just would have played Agnes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not get too cocky here. Some of the last things I'm going to mention about NWA season. He had the third best scoring wide receiver in our league, Stefan Diggs. He had the 10th best scoring wide receiver in Mike Evans. Had the fourth best scoring running back in James Robinson. Had the seventh best running back in Jonathan Taylor. Had the ninth best running back in Josh Jacobs. And he had the highest scoring tight end. Excuse me, I was on the next page. And the highest scoring tight end. So there you go. He drafted well. Picked up guys well. And uh, so, G, this is uh, one of the last questions I'll ask you. But who is your, in your opinion, your fantasy MVP? Uh, By far, hands down, James Robinson. Period. Um, Good call. Horrible team. Still showed up. I mean, week after week. Um, and the last game the, for the final, for the championship, I wasn't even mad that he didn't play. You know, I said, <laughs> shit, you got me here, man. You know, so definitely hands down, James Robinson. Yeah. For an, un, for, for, for an undrafted running back, too, definitely in reality and in fantasy. So good on you on that one. So that's the, you know, and he came from a, he came from a, you know, a smaller school, too. So. You know those the, the, those rank those players. You know come from the smaller schools. Just have I think always have a little bit of chip on their shoulder, and that kind of helps in reality and in fantasy. So good on you on that on that move there. Thank you, Todd. Uh, did you guys, Mikey or Todd, have any questions you want to ask? G, I know I just kind of went on it and kind of went through the week, but if you guys have any questions, you can throw them out there if you'd like. I don't. I don't really have a question. I just want to give credit where credit is due on this. As far as G's draft is concerned, I mean, when you're when anybody when you're drafting, I don't care how good you are, it, it's very difficult to avoid players getting hurt or players busting out. And if you look at G's draft, I mean, his first eight picks. So we're talking about eight rounds. 
those eight players, not a single one of them busted. And every single one of them contributed to him winning. I mean, Stefan Diggs was a seventh rounder. Dobbins was an eighth rounder. You know, he had drafted DeAndre Swift, who he ended up, you know, using in a trade. You know, Kelsey was good. Kyler Murray was good. Josh Jacobs was good. You know, every single pick that he made within those first eight rounds was was really good. And then to put on top of that, I don't think any other players as far as add-ons during the season scored more points than Herbert and James Robinson. So, yeah, just kudos to you all, all the way around. <laughs> Mike, yeah, I appreciate that, man. I do. And, um, you know, that, that was uh... – that, that's great and great, great work by just looking that up. I might have had no idea if you never said anything, man. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And too, does it feel good now? You're the you're the the seventh person now in the league now, uh, seventh person now to win to win the championship. Because obviously you've been in the league a lot longer than you know than I have, and and you know than I think uh, than obviously Dylan and Kevin has been. So that kind of you know. Does it obviously feel really assuring, you know, keep going at it? We got, I mean, fantasy football is fun regardless when you win or whether you win or lose, but just knowing, hey, like, you know, you, you come really you come really close, but not quite got there. But does it feel like, you know, now like you got your first championship, like you feel, you know, like like the like the monkeys off your back kind of thing? Yeah, you know, that first one is always tough. It's always tough mm-hmm. to grab that first championship and you know, to finally get the first one under my belt, um, you know, it, it feels really good. It, it, mm-hmm. it gives me that resurgence to say, okay, whatever you were doing before didn't work. Mm-hmm. Focus so much you're doing now. And to be honest with you, a um, couple of things I didn't know. First thing, I didn't know shit about the waiver wire. And I know <laughs> oh, that that's right. Weird. We had that conversation this year. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know anything about the waiver wire. I never looked at the waiver wire for the past 10 years. I didn't know. I had no idea. I know that sounds crazy, but I didn't know. And now that I looked at it and I started going, oh, okay, well, let me hold up. Let me do that. And I started being more methodical with my picks. I think that really helped me. You know, I wasn't just putting something out there doing that. And I mean, for a while I had you know, top five, you know, four, I had the first for a couple of weeks and that really helped me. And, um, you know, studying also, um, you know, you guys know that, you know, I was in Vegas and, um, you know, that's, that's the betting capital of the world, you know, and I, not only did I study, uh, study for fantasy, I also sports bet. So, you know, I actually hit a few pretty good tickets this year and, um, one of my biggest tickets was, I think it was in week 11 or week 12, you know, I, I, I racked up six sixty five hundred dollars on one weekend, Nice. you know, and the next weekend I hit it for another three racks. So, you know, um, all of that studying, uh, even though, you know, like he said, like Todd said, you know, fantasy is fun, win or lose, but all that studying, it's a science. And it's amazing how, and I'll be honest, I give credit to you three, especially, you know, Mikey, because he comes up with these, you know, these great stats and, you know, all that stuff takes time and you have to have a love for it and you have to have, you know, uh, some type of, uh, some type of craziness in your blood to do it as much as you do. And uh, let me give you guys kudos because that's where it's at, man. And, uh, you know, that's, that's crazy. Um, and I, I, I enjoy it now more now that I'm the champion. And uh, it was rough this year because then, uh, this too, I had to deal with COVID. We all did, but I had to deal with what players was coming in and out for COVID. And we all did. And I just got lucky guessing that stuff, man. So last, any last words from the champ before we uh, get out of here to this evening? And yeah. If I could send some thank yous out to my people, that'd be great. I got a list here. Can I, yeah, I'll make course. it quick. <laughs> We'll play the music okay. when you're when it's time for you to get off. Okay. Def- oh, and I also have one for that, too. <laughs> that's nice. cold. As soon as I start talking, bleep, ah, that's a podcast. <laughs> um, but honestly, no, honestly, I uh, I just, I give glory to God. That's my, that's my number one. Everyone knows how religious I am. 
Um, so I give oh, glory to God. I know sometimes my mouth don't say it, but you know, I never said I'm perfect. <laughs> so um, nothing without him. I thank my family, you know, my son Jalen, like I said, who you know, won his championship for his first year. And son, I told you he's going to be listening. I said, son, hey, I told you it was going to be a takeover. So we got it, baby. Um, my bro, TK, Antoine, you guys met him one year when he drafted for me. Oh, yeah. And yeah, so uh, just bouncing ideas off of him. He made it, but uh, Mr. Josh Jacobs screwed him and his. So I just want to say <laughs> thanks, bro, for being there and helping me out. Uh, bouncing ideas uh, to my queen, you know, who's Aww. put up with my uh, my many mood swings and my attitude and my ignoring and, you know, she's asking questions, not coming to dinner and different things and uh, funny that she got into it, you know, and she's been listening to you guys. So uh, listens to your podcast and everything. She, she's she's it's fun to her. And, you know, I'm just thankful for that. Um, so uh just want to shout my sister, shout out to my sisters in Houston, Dallas, and Amarillo, who we spent watching uh, Kamara run for six touchdowns, which was crazy oh, on Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that was dope. And, and real quick, what's funny about that is, even if I would have played him and Kamara still would have scored those touchdowns on me, I still would have won. So that's oh, what you're saying. Sh- if you would have played Kevin, is that what you're saying? Yeah, even if yeah. I would have played, I still would have won. <laughs> That's my little shit talking I would do. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, just give a shout out to my, my sister, my bro, Marie and Clarence. They're in Missouri. I want to thank them for having such an awesome tight end. So, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, thank you guys. You know, he's beast. Um and the kids love them. My aunt, my aunt Monica, my uncle Jay, that's back in Vegas, you know, and I love them. They've always supported me. My uncle Dwayne, who, you know, didn't doesn't know shit about <laughs> fantasy football, but I could talk to him about anything, and he supported me. Um, so he was always encouraging. And you know, last but not least, you know, it's a it's been a rough 2020 for all of us. Um, but I want to mm-hmm. dedicate this to my grandmother Ruth Lewis and my aunt Laverne Johnson who I lost both of them this year oh, um, right. really close to me and uh, it's been rough um, and uh, you know it's just been a rough 2020 and uh, losing both of them one of them close to my birthday and actually lost my aunt Laverne on Jalen's birthday my son mm-hmm. uh, July 10th so and they were close so it's, it was really hard um, and I, I, I love and miss them dearly and you know, I just want to wish you guys and say thank you to you guys, all you guys that play, um, and just say thank you for being there, man. And, and you know, <clears throat> the bigger picture is, you know, this is fun, like Todd said. Um, but you know what? It can bring people through a bad day. It can bring people through a bad week. Uh, just to see and hear somebody else and take your mind off of off of life and look at football and look at stats and do things like that or listen to your podcast you guys and it, it could take somebody away from what's going on in the world so you guys really don't know what you guys do and how much you help you know help us but i'm gonna say you you've helped me out a great deal you've mm-hmm. helped my family out a great deal and i just hope that you guys continue to have uh this this hunger for this and going into 2021 i wish you guys and the people you love and the people that love you back all the best many blessings and healthy stay healthy and uh get ready for next year man and uh just 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 always remember who has you and just just tell those people that you don't tell them you love them doesn't matter. And I know it's hard for you, Eric, to tell Aaron you love him. Tell him you love him. <laughs> tell him you love him. And if you don't, Aaron, I love you. I love you. I, I, I loved whooping your tail this year. I loved it. You know, but, <laughs> you know, but, but, but love is scarce and love's a need. So, you know, I love you guys for what you do. Um, I love, I love being a part of this and I can't wait to do it again next year. And that does not mean that we do not stay connected just because football is not going. Couldn't have said it better myself, for sure. We appreciate that you were in the league and 
you have fun with it and you know you, you've never given up on it and that's why we like having you in the league you, you're inter- you're entertaining you're engaging and you know like you said uh, fantasy football while it can frustrate us it's also a way to get away from things to get away from some of the tough things in life so couldn't have said it better myself uh, on next week's show, uh, we'll give you guys our MVPs, our busts, our surprises, our pickups of the year, our drops of the year, and we'll tabulate those Doe Awards to see who won that the most. And, you know, we'll see uh, where these experts, uh, so-called experts, went wrong, where they went right. Uh, so if you guys are listening out there, do you have any thoughts about MVPs or busts or anything, just send me a text, send me an email. I know Kevin said he might want to try to be on the show next week, so we might have him on. Uh, just send them to me. We'd love to kind of tabulate them and uh, pick those guys out. Uh, final standings in draft order. Because I know a lot of us want to go through this again. Uh, finishing last <laughs> and drafting first is Belt Sanders. Uh, finished 11th. Drafting second is Kilgore Trout. Tamales, drafting third. He finished 10th. By week, finished ninth. He'll be drafting fourth. Notorious CUP, he'll be drafting fifth. He finished eighth. Finishing seventh was Butterfingers. Uh, finishing, uh, he'll be drafting sixth. Uh, drafting seventh will be Gonzo Katz. He finished sixth. Myself, the Lemonheads, finished fifth. Uh, he'll be drafting eighth. Cooper Cousins drafting ninth. He finished fourth. Eaton W's finished third. He's drafting tenth. Lion Rip uh, finishing uh, as the runner-up, drafting eleventh. He finished second. And of course, the champion will be drafting twelfth. He'll get that turn at twelve and thirteen. So that'll do it for this week's show. Again, big congrats to G. Uh, the trophy has been ordered. And hopefully we can get together in March, as you mentioned, and I can hand it to you and uh, we can celebrate it a little bit more. It was a wild and wacky season. And uh, we appreciate you working, uh, all of you working hard all these years and, you know, putting out the, putting out the hard work. And then we'll head into 2021. So everyone have a safe and fun New Year's from Todd, Mikey, our new champion, G. I'm Eric Lansing. We'll see you next year in a podcast. <laughs> Everyone take care. Nice.